travelers, this is the Baseball Time Machine. Our next journey takes us to the not-so-distant past, 2015. Just weeks before the 86th edition of the MLB All-Star Game, the Kansas City Royals were set to make history with eight position players starting for the American League. The Royals were coming off their first World Series appearance since 1985 and were playing good baseball heading towards the All-Star break, but something was fishy. Kansas City had a strong team and a passionate fan base behind them, but eight All-Star starters? Was something going on with the voting system? Did the league have a hand in altering the results? Let's step into the portal and find out. Before we discuss the Royals controversy, let's run through the history of All-Star voting and troubles the league has faced throughout the years. The very first MLB All-Star game was in 1933. In 1939, the New York Yankees hosted the event and set a record with six players starting in the Midsummer Classic. Fan voting began in 1947, and Major League Baseball has had a few run-ins with ballot stuffing since then. In 1957, Cincinnati Redlegs fans got caught ballot stuffing. Seven Redlegs players were elected, with the only other position player being Cardinals legend Stan Musial. Cincinnati had a strong offense, but many agreed that they didn't deserve seven starters. MLB Commissioner Ford Frick conducted an investigation and found that over half of the total ballots casted came from the city of Cincinnati. Turns out that local businesses were playing a vital role in the stuffing. The Cincinnati Times Star, a local newspaper, printed pre-marked ballots with Red Lakes players on them in the Sunday paper. This made it extremely easy for fans and newspaper readers to vote for the team. Some bars around the city required patrons to fill out a ballot full of Red Lakes players before they could receive their drink. These methods weren't fair, but they sure were effective. Unfortunately for them, Commissioner Frick was on the case and caught them red-legged. Frick made the executive decision to remove outfielders Gus Bell and Wally Post in their starting spots and give them to the much more deserving Willie Mays and Hank Aaron. Commissioner Frick wanted to make sure that this never happened again, so he revoked fan voting, leaving it to the players, managers, and coaches. This would stand until 1970, when Commissioner Bowie Kuhn would give power back to the fans. From 1970 until internet voting in the late 1990s, each team was given an equal number of ballots to hand out to fans, around 400,000 each. 1999 brought about the first example of online ballot stuffing. Boston Red Sox fan Chris Nandor used a simple computer program to submit approximately 25,000 votes to Red Sox players John Valentin, Scott Hatterberg, and Jose Offerman. Hatterberg stood out among the three, as he had only played in 11 games and was set to miss three months with an injury. Most notably, he voted for Sox shortstop Nomar Garcia Parra 39,000 times. This may be a lot of votes coming from one person, but Nomar still sat 20,000 votes behind Yankees shortstop Derek Jeter. Online voting was still in its infancy and only accounted for 25% of the total votes submitted. Once MLB discovered the artificial votes, they were eliminated from Nomar and the others' totals. This proved irrelevant, as Nomar mounted a big comeback naturally and was able to start in the Midsummer Classic at his home ballpark. In 2012, San Francisco Giants fans were suspected of ballot stuffing, especially after Melky Cabrera edged out stars like Matt Kemp and Andrew McCutcheon for a starting outfield spot. However, Commissioner Buzz Selig cleared the team and fans of any wrongdoing, and the Giants moved forward with three starting position players. To hammer home their innocence, the NL dominated the game, with Melky winning All-Star Game MVP in the only All-Star selection of his career. Now, back to 2015. On June 15th, with just under two weeks left in All-Star voting, the Kansas City Royals were dominating the ballots. Almost the entire American League starting lineup was filled with KC's finest. Behind the plate was Salvador Perez. From left to right on the infield were Mike Moustakis, Alcides Escobar, Omar Infante, and Eric Hosmer. The corner outfield spots were occupied with Alex Gordon and Lorenzo Cain, and sitting in the DH spot was Kendris Morales. The only starter not from Kansas City was, unsurprisingly, Mike Trout. A few of these selections were justified, but some of these guys weren't all-star material. This lineup will be missing the AL's top 7 hitters, 9 of its top 10 home run hitters, and 9 of its top 10 leading RBI hitters, pushing them to the reserves. Players and fans alike shared their thoughts on the potential of 8 Royals players starting for the American League. Royals fan Stephanie Ole backed up the fan support that Kansas City was getting, saying that fans would have the team's back, especially when they're playing good baseball. Royals outfielder Alex Gordon, who had a starting spot for the American League at the time, said the MLB would change the rule if KC was able to field eight starters. Gordon thought that the most deserving players should go, and not just who's most popular. American League Reserve and Blue Jays outfielder Jose Bautista saw where Royals fans were coming from, but made the point that the majority of baseball fans just want to see the best players participate in the game. Royals fan and Kansas City radio personality Danny Parkins made it clear that Royals fans are the most passionate in baseball. The voting frenzy definitely backed that up. MLB allowed individual fans to vote up to 35 times, but that was per email address. Fans would create as many emails as they wanted to, and 
go on a voting spree from there. The Royals were hot in the baseball streets as they grabbed the admiration of millions with their improbable 2014 World Series run. According to a Fox Sports Midwest spokesperson, the Royals had a 12.3 local TV rating, which was the highest of any MLB team since 2002. Kauffman Stadium's attendance was up 27.7% from the prior season, averaging well over 30,000 fans every game. Every year, Major League Baseball analyzes the votes that come in from around the world. If the league suspects fraud or another issue, they have the right to cancel votes. This is typically an annual digital security practice for votes that go over the limit. 2015 was the first season in MLB history that voting was online only. As a result, the amount of ballots went through the roof, setting a new record. In turn, this gave people more of an opportunity to commit fraud and submit more ballots than allowed. Major League Baseball is ready to face the task. Approximately 65 million votes, or 20% of the total cast at the time, were canceled. This significantly altered the voting landscape. The ballots shifted, with some Royals losing their starting spots. This, of course, was nothing personal towards the Royals or the fans. MLB President of Business and Media at the time, Bob Bowman, praised Royals fans for how active they were, even after so many ballots were tossed. He also made it clear that MLB's goal was to create the best fan experience possible, with a game that would be an exciting representation of baseball's best. It's safe to say that canceling of votes put the quality of the American League team in a better direction. You can make a case for some of the Royals players. Guys like Lorenzo Cain and Salvador Perez were definitely playing well enough to be an all-star. But with someone like Omar Infante, whose offensive stats were rather mediocre, it's hard to justify his case to start the all-star game. If you compare him to his replacement, Jose Altuve, the numbers aren't even close. Despite millions of votes being taken away, four Royals were still voted in as starters. Salvador Perez behind the plate, Alcides Escobar at shortstop, Alex Gordon in left field, and Lorenzo Cain in right. Gordon didn't participate in the game due to injury, and was replaced by Baltimore's Adam Jones. KC third baseman Mike Moustakis was beaten out by Josh Donaldson, who wound up setting an AL record with over 14 million votes. Moose was still able to find his way in as a reserve through the final vote. Eric Hosmer had a grip on the lead at first base until Mikel Cabrera passed him. Miggy was injured, so taking the starting spot was Albert Pujols. This would be the last all-star selection of Pujols' illustrious career. Nelson Cruz, who was on his way to having a fantastic season, overtook Kendris Morales as the AL's DH. Wade Davis and Kelvin Herrera would round out the bullpen representing Kansas City. Since the Royals won the AL the year prior, Royals skipper Ned Yost was at the helm of the American League team, with most of his coaching staff behind him. The Royals still had strong representation, even after MLB, quote, sanitized the votes. In the game itself, the American League wound up playing well and winning 6-3. Lorenzo Cain was the only Royal to make a true impact, as he went 2 for 3 with a double and an RBI. Ironically, Mike Trout, the only non-Royal in the starting lineup at one point, went home with All-Star Game MVP. It's not terribly uncommon for multiple players from a great team to be elected as starters. The following season, the NL had four Cubs and the AL had four Red Sox players in the lineup. The Cubs, like the Royals in 2015, would go on to win the World Series. It makes the most sense when the players elected are realistically deserving of the title, All-Star. To put the situation into perspective, imagine this in the present day. A team like the Houston Astros are coming off the World Series appearance. Houston has plenty of dedicated fans, so they dominate the ballots and have eight starters with a couple weeks left in voting. Is this a team you want to see play? Sure, a few of these players could be deserving, and Astros fans might love it, but does every Astro deserve to start in such a special game? I don't think so. There's no doubt that the majority of fans would most likely prefer a team like this, full of talent and oozing star power. In the end, it seemed the right decisions were made. The Royals' four AL starters deserved a start, and the team wound up balanced overall. The Royals had a special squad, but I think we can all agree that MLB made the right decision tossing millions of votes, opening up the opportunity for the rightful All-Stars to regain their top spots. Through balanced voting, baseball fans can achieve the most exciting All-Star game possible. In the end, the crisis was averted, but baseball fans were mere weeks away from watching a very different All-Star game. This has been Baseball Time Machine. Thanks for traveling.